semi-big arenas or venues, start out small. You know, there are things called armories, there are things called community centers, and there are things called high schools. In these <coughs> venues that I've mentioned, and that's the bird in the background, I apologize, but in these venues that I mentioned, In these venues that I've mentioned, these three, along with several others, like, like a, I don't know, it's a park maybe, a public park you can rent out, space there, you can get crowds there. These are the baby steps you need to take for your live events because at least, looking at the seating chart, you could say, okay, uh, this community center only sits 250. Perfect, that'll sell out. That's a sellout right there. Or, uh, this armory sits about 300. Perfect, there's a sellout. Or, this park can seat maybe 3, 400, 250 at most, maybe it could be the limit. Perfect, there's a sellout. And there, are play and there are events like fairs, state fairs, county fairs, you know, that you could go to and take your event to. I have gone, you know, I've gone to the Stanislaus County Fair here in Turlock down the road in Turlock. I've been to the Asparagus Festival in Stockton. And when I look at those festivals, those fairs, I say to myself, you know what? I even thought about this one time when I went to Stanislaus County. I said, you know what? This would be perfect to have, I mean, this would be perfect for TNA to bring a live event to. Because they would have I mean, because you can't tell me that there aren't wrestling fans that wouldn't hear about TNA showing up to do a, a live event at something like that and go like, ooh, I'm going to go sit down, have maybe a, a beer or so, or a drink, cool off, kind of rest my feet a little bit from all the walking, and not want to enjoy a good wrestling show. That, that would be perfect for TNA. It would be. And I think they've done that before, and it's proven to be successful, not just for them, for a lot of other promotions, indie or non-indie. It has been a success because people will want to sit down, rest their feet, as well as enjoy a good show. Just saying. I'm just saying. I mean, I mean to me, it would be perfect. I, you know, one time, I, heck, I even put this on, what was it, for Finiant or DeviantArt? I posted a picture of one of the arenas. It's mostly like a volleyball, maybe a small basketball arena, but mostly volleyball arena at Pacific University. Went there to see a, a concert with my family, with my mom and her sister, and with my mom my, and her sister, my aunt and my uncle. So I went there. I took a picture of the arena before it was filled out, or as we were leaving, I should say. And I captioned it, in for a, it, 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 I captioned it when I uploaded it, at Fort Finney and Divina, I can't think of which one it was, that this would be perfect for TNA. Because the venue size is good, the seating chart is good, it would be the perfect place for TNA to hold an event. See, these are the small areas they need to look at. They can't think, oh, well, we're a global, we're a global uh, you know, co company, we can do big arenas. This isn't the UK TNA. This isn't the UK or wherever you sell out decently. This is the UK, this is not the United Kingdom or anything like that, this is the United States. And here things are a lot more different when it comes to wrestling fans, believe me. And you gotta think smarter too. So to me, doing these venues, like what I've mentioned, or these events, and placing your show around that, works. It helps you out, it gets your name out there, gets your brand out there, and it makes people want to see more makes people want to tune in and see more. And to me, the, that is one of those, that is one thing that TNA needs to work on next year, is to think about if they're going to do live events, do live event tours, to start focusing on those kind of areas. Heck, you could do your TV tapings at some of these events too. You could do your TV tapings at some of these events as well, and it would pay off. It would. Trust me, I know. I know, because even if you, when I went to CSW events, even though it would be a month or two before they come out on DVD, when I would watch them back on DVD, 
It looked decent. It looked good. It looked decent. It looked nice. I mean, heck, when when we brought in a, when they brought in AJ Styles to compete against Darren Sanders, it was like, holy smokes! I've never seen this big of a crowd. But it's because they promoted it well in advance. And you see, if you could do that, even with these small venues, these places that I've mentioned, it would work. Especially with fairs and festivals and all that, it would work. Heck, if TNA was to even think, hey, you know, Pat, you know, Pass in California has that apricot fiesta. Why don't we do a TNA event there? Believe me, you have people from all walks of life sometimes showing up there for that fiesta. An event like that would be perfect. The point I'm trying to make is, the point I'm trying to make is, TNA, this is one area they really need to work on. Really need to work on. And of course, as many people have mentioned, one of the things they also need to work on is the promoting. I mentioned this earlier. They need to work on promoting better. Because if they don't promote better, nobody's going to take them seriously. You know, I'm sure in, you know, in the Charlotte area of North Carolina, I'm sure that they promoted Bound for Glory months in advance, but they didn't really promote it the way it should have been. You know, they should have had commercial, commercial, commercial. They should have had poster, billboards, any place major that people, you know you're going to have crowds of people. You should have had some kind of promotion. Make a deal with the freaking Carolina Panthers. Promote it through their during their games. With the North Carolina Tar Heels. Promote it through their games. Point is, you could have done a lot more to promote it. And you need to look at avenues. Okay, where can we get the most eyes to notice that something like this is coming to their area? What can we do? And that's one thing they need to work on as well. Another thing they have to work on as well is making sure that their talent or their talent or whatever, whatever or whoever shows up. You know, for weeks, the Pope, D'Angelo De Niro, Elijah Burke, if you will, through Twitter had been hinting and hinting and hinting at a new announcer showing up. What was the announcer? TNA goofed the ball on that one? Or both sides miscommunicated or something? Nothing came of it. Nothing. They need to work better on making sure that if they sign someone or they're going to bring somebody in, that they make sure that person arrives on time. That make sure that person gets there and there's no miscommunication. Another thing as well well, the TNA really needs to work on, in my opinion, my honest to God opinion, is to make sure that they have, how, how do I put this, is to make sure they have talent set, signed, and ready to go and not let anything slip through the cracks. Like I said, 2015 wasn't the best year for them. And I don't think it's no secret. I mean, one of the things that really got people talking about them was the Hernandez deal. You see, they allowed themselves to think Hernandez was done with Lucha Underground when he was not. You know, the, the thing is, TNA has a lot to work on. They really do. 2016, whether they're still around by then, well, they should be. Whether they're around by the end of the 2016 or not, it's totally up to them. But what they really need to do is change things up, and they need to really look at the roster. They've got a lot of big-name talent leaving the company within the next few months or at the beginning of next year. So you need to, if I'm Dixie Carter, I'm John Kaborik, I'm whoever's in charge, I say, you know what? As nice as it is to have the Hardy Boys, as nice as it is to have Kurt Angle, we need to get back to basics and we need to focus on the talent that came to TNA because they wouldn't have a shot elsewhere, if you catch my drift, 
and thus let's give them that shot. They need to focus on that talent as well as the homegrown talent and as well as some of the best indie talent they can try to get. That's what they need to do. And again, if you're going to have a big event like Slammiversary or Bound for Glory on the road, make sure you promote it right. And again, as I, and yes, again, like I mentioned, I'll give them credit for doing the smart thing and adding the Hardys to the main event last, month, last night. Because they knew if they didn't, they were going to have a weak-ass main event pay-per-view that we've already seen. And their fans are not gonna, would not want to you know, buy tickets to go see at that venue. So I'll give them credit on that, but that's still not enough. They need to reevaluate themselves as a whole. And everything I've mentioned here, yes, there have been some vast improvements. Battle for Glory was vastly more better and more improved than last year's. But the point is, that's just the first big baby step. The other big baby steps oh, are ahead of them. And one of the biggest leaps they have to make is trying to secure another outlet for those shows. Either that, or they're stuck on YouTube like they were in Canada, or, which it won't be a bad thing, or they end up talking with Netflix or Hulu, or Hulu and try to get a deal that way. So, that's just my thoughts on TNA after Bound for Glory last night. So, let me know what you guys think down below. Sorry this was in multiple parts. And I'll talk to you all later.